period. Show your mind, break it hot, top it slide. You know what we like, yeah. Get up, you don't wanna miss us. In the mix, it's official. It's official. Big facts, no cap. Yeah. Where you at? Yeah. It's time to kick back. Welcome to the mix, everybody. Listen, we have an incredible show for you tonight. Isaiah John from the hit show Snowfall will be getting into the mix with us tonight. And our girl Leah Henry just went viral recently, and we're getting all of the exclusive tea on her interview with Matthew Knows, aka Beyonce's daddy. Okay, Zanique, she's still on maternity leave, and we cannot wait to have her back on the show very soon. But Back with us one more time. We got our girl, actress, and YouTube star, Tila Dunn, the co-host with us again. What up, Tila? What's good? Hello. It's so good to be back. I seriously love you guys. Oh, Love you, too. Love you. <laughs> love you All, right. All right, guys. Well, let's just get it started then. So, Tila, why don't you start us off today? All right, let's do it. So over the weekend, the NBA took their all-star festivities to Atlanta. And if you guys remember last week, we hyped up a celebrity game between Jack Harlow and Quavo versus 2 Change and Lil Baby. I also want to quickly point out that I was the only one that thought that Jack and Quavo would no, win. No, you wasn't. No, don't come okay, on wait. here, Captain. Me and Romeo. Me and Romeo. Don't, thank you. Don't come on here, Captain. <laughs> okay, that's true. But we were right, Romeo. Okay, I, mean, I think I said it, but anyway. I know basketball, baby. I know basketball. It's true. Uh -huh. It's true. Lucky, y'all were lucky. Y'all were lucky. Exactly. And can, can I just say that I thought it was the baby. I didn't know it was Lil Baby. So oh. that's why I said the baby because I just oh. knew the baby. Really? I it was the okay, I got confused with the babies. It was my fault. So. Man, let me tell you something. Look, t wait before you get into this, T. The thing with basketball, two on two is a little different from five on five and one on one. So you depend on that second player more because in two on two, it's only y'all. If it's five on five, you got four other people to rely on. So if somebody else a little trash, you got the other three. Then one on one is all on you. So two and two could be kind of tricky. Now, you know Quavo going to just come ready to play. But take it away, T. I'm sorry. I was right. Me and T was right. No, you're right. You're so right. But what we didn't expect was a little baby to show us that basketball was really just not his game. Woo. He got his shot blocked. He threw a couple air balls and hit all backboard on a free throw. And now the meme community is just having a field day. I mean, obviously. So what do you guys think of the game? And how do you feel about what you witnessed from little baby? Ooh. Listen, um, I don't want little baby to reference anything in his music about balling, basketball <laughs> yeah. on the court. I don't want it, little baby. You can't Dang. do it. You're a great rapper, but he he surprised me a lot. The free throw off the, the top Ooh. of the board, I, I was in shock. That was that was terrible. That was bad. It no, was, that was bad. I was, was, like, <laughs> if you if he airballed the free throw, okay. Like some pros airball stuff happens, but like off like the top of the backboard, like why didn't you tell someone you couldn't fall before you agreed? <laughs> yeah. That happens in the NBA all the time, Jamie. No, we don't. It it don't. don't. No, it, it don't. Shaq, no, it Shaq don't. had his moments where Shaq would airball it, you know, but he'd go in the paint and still be productive. Little yeah. baby didn't do nothing out there. He did. He, did. he really did not. <laughs> I, I, I felt like hurt. I could have done better than little baby, and oh, I don't oh, want to oh, do that. Oh, I, I almost feel like I feel he has to be so embarrassed to be a black man and to be like a rapper that he is and to know that he got beat by this white boy rapper, <laughs> Jack Harlow. Like, what can you say in your raps now? Like, you can't come off like saying I'm the best in the game. Like, you just no, you you're not. Had <laughs> air balls. You had air balls at the free throw line. That's like, I can't yes. even play basketball and I can play basketball better than that. Ladies and gents. You can't have everything. The man is the, one of the greatest rappers right. right now. He can't be the best basketball player and the greatest rapper. He's not Master P, okay? Oh, 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 oh. oh. I'm, I'm, I'm just I was waiting thinking. on Romeo to say that. <laughs> nah, but my family, we really hope. But uh, it's crazy because a lot of people with me and my pops, they're like, oh, you guys started off as basketball players, so you guys don't count as rappers. And I'm like, 
And then oh. when I go play with my professional friends, they're like, well, bro, you are a rapper, not a professional. So I'm always in this middle little weird spot. So I don't even get invited to a lot of games like this because people just like, you really do this. So why would we ah. play? Yeah. I get that. Yeah, I get you're it. really about it. You and okay. USC man fight on, like you're about it. <laughs> can, we, can we real quick just give some props to Quavo though? Like, yes! Quavo, Quavo is like the MVP, baby. Quavo came out there and I was shocked. I didn't know Quavo had the skills like that. Quavo went out there and said, okay, I'm about to run this shit. He's the reason why they won, because Jack Harlow wasn't, he wasn't at that amazing. You know, Quavo, Quavo had them rap snacks. That's why. That was like that little special juice in Space Jam. <laughs> uh -oh. All right. Uh -oh. All right. <laughs> no, Quavo love basketball. He does this for the community. He does camps for even my little brothers attended some of his basketball camps where he really loved the game. And that's why I told you, I'm like, I don't care how big two chains is and this and that. Quavo actually practice every day. He has mm. a passion for this right now. And he's trying to build the culture with making that connection with tying it with basketball and music. Once again, like them AI days with Reebok. Mm. Well, listen, social media went crazy with the memes and some celebs even come out and said that they want the smoke in a court, including Chris Brown and our very own Romeo Miller. So Romeo, so you and Chris Beasy, y'all really want the smoke or is this like, you know, Man. social media? Is it real Man. or is it just for social media? Let me tell you something about basketball and hip hop in the industry. Everybody know whoever came to those celebrity games growing up, me and Chris Brown, this is what we really do. Like, you got to put a pro on one of us. If I'm not guarding him or he not guarding me, wow. you got to hope that you got Terrell Owens on your celebrity team because this is really what I do. And he was in that uh, position where he could have went play college ball as well. And they put us on opposite teams for a reason. Me and Chris never played on the same team. So we like, man, if me and him run it up two on two, I don't think anybody in the industry will beat us. And there's a lot of hoopers, not saying – People can't hoop. The game could hoop. J. Cole could hoop. Quavo could hoop. But when it comes to tier one, I think me and Chris, well, I know me and Chris is at the top. That's all I'm saying. So Ooh, just, throw wow. the invite. just throw the invite. Let me come into some of these open runs that they've been doing. You're just going to see. So what do we got to do to get a Chris Brown uh, Romeo matchup? Man, Chris already hit me. Chris hit me. He hit Ooh. me. The, you know, he's like, man, let's go get this money, baby. So we about oh, to go really? oh, for real. That's dope. <laughs> I was watching that. I heard it I first. We got the exclusive, y'all. Y'all heard yeah, it first. Yeah, that was the exclusive. Yeah, me and, Chris, <laughs> me and Chris ready, man. When it come to basketball, I transform all this humble, you know, the laid back dude. Nah, like all of that. When I'm on the court, I turn into a monster, a beast. <laughs> well, there all you. right, you guys. Right. Well, uh, uh, Okay, <laughs> Look, <laughs> Lil Baby may have airballed on Saturday, but Friday night, Drake surprised us with a three-track EP titled Scary Hours 2. While it was only three songs, it had two big features on the track, Lil Baby and Rick Ross. So how do you guys feel about the new music from Drake? I personally, I think I'm biased because I freaking love Drake. I just feel like anything he puts out, I'm just like, yes. I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, I definitely don't think it was as great as some of his previous albums, but I still jammed out to it. I think it's pretty fun. No, yeah, I was going to say I'm the complete opposite. I've honestly like steered away from Drake recently because I feel like a lot of his music is like repeating his old stuff. Like mm -hmm. I've listened to like Find Your Love, like that type of Drake mm -hmm. forever. Do not get me wrong. That is Drake yeah. in his prime. But I feel like right now, I feel like a lot of his songs are kind of sounding the same. So I'm getting a little bit turned off, but mm -hmm. it's all right. Yeah, because I can honestly say his last project was um Dark Lane Demo Tapes in 2020, and it had 14 songs on it, and I honestly only liked about six or seven of them. Which, like, Jamie, I was a big Drake fan when he first came out. I still love Drake, but I, I did like the EP. I feel like if Certified Lover Boy is in the lane of this scary hours, too, I'm going to be a big fan of it. What's Next, his song What's Next is so dope. Nike was all over it. So, you know, I had to do my Nike. You know, I'm usually an Adidas girl, but today I did Nike in, in honor of the <laughs> Oh, Jazz. You want to know what's so crazy? Stripes. Come on. You want to know what's crazy, y'all? People always say the same thing. You know what? I wasn't really feeling that Drake album. Then six months later, everybody's singing it word for word. It's Drake true. Is only competing with himself. It comes to a point in your career where you're so successful and you're so good at what you do to where your expectations, it isn't reality. 
And mm. it's just like you look at brands, like I tell people, McDonald's still serve the same damn thing and they making billions. Burger King mm. serve the same thing. Nike still making Nikes. Jordan still selling Jordans. Mm. But when it comes to people, we expect them to keep evolving and evolving. Mm. And I just think Drake's just in a, a lane right now where he's competing with himself. And he's going to have a lot of criticism because how much more can you do? Well, I got a question. I is so agree. Is Drake I, I as like hot as he was maybe six years ago when all you needed was a feature from Drake and it went to number one? Do y'all think that Drake's, um, Drake's, his stardom has kind of dimmed a little or do you think he's just as hot? No, it happens. My dad always say this. I mean, when he went into the rap game, my pops was like, I'm only betting on myself to be hot for three years. Like you look at music every two to three years is somebody who's surpassing the best person. Mm -hmm. So Drake is in a place now where he's like in that Jay-Z, you know, uh, yeah. puffy master P mode where he could just be the boss. He don't have to be the most famous or the most popping because mm -hmm. that's hard to emulate. It's like asking Michael Jordan to go win six more championships. Fact. Well, Drake is definitely at legend status right now, but just to, um, kind of go off what you said, Romeo, I feel like, how can we not like the Drake song? We hear it everywhere. Like, let's be honest. When Kiki, Do You Love Me? I don't remember what the name of it's called. If an upcoming artist released that, we would have said, we don't like that. What is this? But because yeah. Drake said it and it was everywhere, we Drake saw the video everywhere, every, everybody doing the dance to it. We like it. It grows on us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. but he's that legend. You're a smart woman, Jazz. You get it. You take it to another level where we talk about <laughs> now, the program. <laughs> It is okay. a business too. It is. It I is. have to ask, who's an artist that, that you guys feel like needs to drop an album that's in secret? Kind of like how Drake just dropped it and, you know, Beyonce dropped Lemonade, nobody expected. Like, what are some artists that you think just- SZA. SZA. And if SZA, if you are listening, oh, if you yes. drop this album that everybody is waiting for, True. listen, SZA, you got the vibes, ma. I'm ready for the album. I'm ready to cry. I'm ready to party. I'm ready to be happy. I'm ready to be sad. If SZA don't drop this album and then come on the show. We want you on the show, SZA, to talk about Please. it. Please. I yeah. love SZA. I'm going to go Rihanna. I know she's probably Ooh, never going to make music again, but I've been waiting for Rihanna to make music since freaking 2017. So, I you can't stop holding your breath on that one. Rihanna said, fuck y'all. Oh, yeah, no, 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 I'm today. making millions of dollars with this Fenty skincare line. And you know what I'm saying? And this yeah. line, hey, Do you know why? Do you know why she's not doing music? Why, Romeo? Why? Let me tell y'all. I, I, I hit this briefly. The music game, you got to give 110% of your life. So when you actually make it and you conquer that, that's like with me. People always like, you coming back, it's like, that life of touring, waking mm. up every other day, having to fly to Europe, having to fly to mm. freaking China, go to this place, then go to Texas. And then it's like, it takes, it's taxing on your body. Mm. So it's like, like y'all said, she living her life now. She get to do what she want. It's so much more than making a good, a good album. And, and our, in our perspective, we get to listen to it. She has to go travel the world to promote this. It's very taxing. Well, not in a COVID world. Actually, she could have done it without traveling a lot in this COVID world. This may be a perfect time. You own it sometime. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, we all have to watch it. It was that music, Riri. Come it's on, a new bro. day and age. Riri and SZA. And then y'all can do a virtual, uh, like a live concert. Y'all can tour together virtually. Perfect. And then y'all going to be mad that she ain't going on real tour. <laughs> yeah, right. Girl, right. No, Romeo, we won't. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that is hilarious okay well we have to take a little bit of a break y'all but coming okay. up next we have such an incredible artist and incredible actor mr isaiah so please please keep it tuned and keep it locked yeah. in on the mix baby yo the manyadi's calling Welcome back to The Mix, only on Fog Soul. Our next guest is a young star on the rise. He plays Leon in the late John Singleton's FX series titled Snowfall, which depicts Los Angeles in the 80s at the start of the crack epidemic that hit so many of our communities nationwide. Let's welcome Isaiah John into The Mix. What's good, Isaiah? How are you feeling yeah. like tonight? <laughs> Nice. Thank you for ha for coming on the show, man. Wow, Everybody's you. loving your God, show. Snowfall is like the biggest hit this season. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> also, I saw on social media you just bought a brand new house, so congratulations. Can you tell us about it, and what's your favorite thing about owning a new home? Oh, Lord. Uh, I just found some new information out, but it's like, <laughs> um, it's just a lot of acres, 38 acres. Um, Crazy. Uh, wow. 
found out it was like a slave headquarters back in the day. So I'm like, I'm dealing with that, you know, it's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting, but um, I love it though. It's cool. I enjoy being out there. So I yeah. read that before, before you made it, before you got this role, you had a dollar in your bank account. Is that true? Absolutely. Wow. I, was, I mean, I was, I was a janitor just, you know, pursuing a dream, uh, you know, pursuing this for like 12, 13 years. So uh, yeah, that was a really interesting time. Man, but um, I definitely uh, no, I want to so. commend you. <laughs> I want to commend you on your journey to get to where you are today because I know it's not easy. Anybody's right. success isn't easy. We all have a story. But I want to ask you this: Was acting something you always wanted to do, even as a kid? Um, you know that's interesting because as a kid growing up, like me and my siblings would perform for our parents on the weekends, but we were really shy out, you know, in public. So like it wasn't until I was about 13 years old where I consciously made the decision to want to act. And that was simply because one, I wanted to do something different than my peers were doing. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of like was always observative, like when I was a kid. So I just saw everybody kind of going down the same path and I just wanted to do something different or work towards something to where in my earlier twenties, I could reap the benefits. So yeah. I decided to just pursue acting and I fell in love with it. So I spent a lot of my years pursuing acting, um, honestly, just training. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, so what kind of kid were you growing up? Cause I heard something about skateboarding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went through, I went through a lot of different phases of skateboarding, BMX and, um, listening to rock had hair down my back the whole nine. So I went through a wow. lot. Of, a wow. Lot of, Y'all don't know about Bill Metzen. Y'all wasn't on a Bill Metz bike. <laughs> not I. I'll tell you that right now. Definitely not. <laughs> I'm a rock star with the long hair. I love it. I had the mongoose bike and everything down in Louisiana. Uh oh. <laughs> I, I would pay money to see you on one of them bikes, Romeo. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> well, Isaiah, look, as an actor myself, I always love hearing stories of how other actors got their roles. But is it true that you didn't even want to audition for Snowfall until your mom made you? Yeah. Um, so the year I booked Snowfall in 2016. So the beginning of that year specifically was a very hard year for me <laughs> as an actor um, because of my look, uh, my my uh, bloodline goes all over the world, um, like India, Jamaica. So I'm just really mixed up with a lot of things. So earlier that year, uh, I would do auditions and they would say my acting is great, but you know, I don't really fit into the world they're trying to create or I don't fit in with the family that they already have. So it was more so like um, some being blunt, they would tell me you just don't look black enough for this or whatever. So. And, you know, hearing that, and I was 20 at the time hearing that, I'm just like, okay, it was hard to hear. So when my mom told me that she'd been following this project and, you know, she was like, I think it's perfect for you. And, you know, they want you to audition. I'm like, ah, I don't want to do it. So we kind of argued all day. I was at work, you know, being a janitor, my work, arguing my mom through text. Like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And she's like, you're going to do it. So I get home. She, you know, telling me I'm going to do it. So I, I, I do one take. And she watches it. She's like, this is horrible. You're going to redo it and actually put some energy into it. Because <laughs> obviously at that point, I was just very, I was really defeated. And I didn't want to hear that again. I'm like a John Singleton project based in the 80s, based in Los Angeles. They're not going to look at me twice. Mm-hmm. So, you know, she honestly <laughs> she threw that second, that second take. And um, I forgot about it. Still going to work. And about a week later, she texted me like, they want to fly you out to L.A. for um, a callback with Damson Idris. Wow. 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 Applause for that, baby. (laughs) That's awesome. Well, that's a true testament to when something is for you, it is for you. And no one can do anything to stop something from happening for you. And I hear that all the time. And I completely understand where you come from, where you are auditioning. You're like, man, I'm not going to get that. So I don't even want to put forth the energy. But you never know what can be your breakthrough and what will be something that will change your life forever. So thank God for your mama for knowing that and coming in and saving the day, man. Yeah, I think as an actor, we all have those moments. It's very crazy. I, I remember some of my projects that I booked. It was ones where I'm like, man, I don't even know. The, I didn't read the script. I don't know the role. They not going to pick me. I'm not about to go in there. People always think even me being Romeo and Lil Romeo things was kind of given to me. 
had to go audition in there just like everybody else. I remember jumping the broom, I went in there and I was reading for a whole different role. And they, and uh, Tasha was like, no, read this role. And I'm like, I don't know the lines, but they're like, just read it. I read it and they gave me the spot, right? They gave me the character right there, the role. And then this movie called Mega Church Murder. I remember I was like, y'all, I just got this right now. I'm gonna have to hold the paper up. You know, y'all down with that? It's like, yeah, just be you. And I got that <laughs> one. So wow. you are a prime example of God having a vision, vision way much bigger than you. And that's why you, you can never give up. You never know what's in your future. Seriously. Mm. Hey, like, did you know that you were, did, did you feel like you were going to get, um, are we there yet? Did you absolutely know like, this is for me? This is what I'm going to get? Or were you like, uh, I don't want to audition for this? Um, when I auditioned for Are We There Yet, I had to go through so many different auditions. It was probably like four or five different auditions. And by the last like chemistry read with like the family, I, I honestly didn't think that I got it at all. Like I was wow. like, I did the best. I literally told my mom, I was like, I did the best I could, but like, I don't know. Cause they were, they were tricking me. They were like, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, this is a comedy. Like, aren't y'all supposed to laugh? And then I found out that I got it. And like, you just yeah. never know. Never actors know. Life. Mm -hmm. Actors' life ain't no joke. It really isn't. <laughs> and Isaiah, after the third season of Snowfall, the creator and executive producer and legendary director John Singleton had passed away. And I just, I want to know, how was it filming this season for you and your cast without him? Um. Uh... Man, I remember the day that we found out that we were all on set of filming. Of course, the day was cut short. Um, but what I like to tell people is Snowfall is like, we're literally like a family, crew and cast. It's not just cast and the crew. It's like we're all together in this. So uh, coming into season four, we all know his vision. We all know his dislikes and likes. So I don't think any of us were really nervous. We were all excited to, you know, push his legacy forward um, and to push his vision forward. And we, you know, he, he put people in place to make sure that everything was the way that he wanted it. Mm -hmm. We were all excited. We just, especially when the pandemic hit, like it kind of, you know, we stopped in the middle of episode four specifically. So um, we were all just really anxious to get back to it and finish what we started. And uh, I think I personally seeing some episodes already, um, I could see the difference pre COVID and, you know, post COVID, mm -hmm. a whole different mindset. It's like we were just really anxious and ready to finish what we started. So um, I'm really excited for everyone to see these performances because we put our <laughs> art into these things. So it's amazing. Oh, I'm so excited to see that now. Um, yeah. I just want to know what your favorite memory of John Singleton is. Man, one of my first memories, uh, well, I have many. Um, one was when I first got to LA, we were in the middle of filming the pilot. Uh, he invited my mom and I on his little boat because <laughs> he loved his boat. And he, uh, it was just me, my mom and John. And he was just like, you know, I know you're new to LA, you know, you're new to, you know, doing your research about this era. So just ask me questions. So he literally cooked for me and my mom and like, I was able to ask him and pick his brain, just ask him anything. And to me, it's like, for someone that doesn't know me um, to just, accept me with open arms like that that was very huge for him to for him to be who he was and who he is to do that like that was just uh he didn't have to do that and um that definitely stands out in my mind always and forever so he lost a huge pioneer in the filmmaking yeah. world an incredible director you know that told so many beautiful stories um of black people in america and forever, we always will miss Mr. John Singleton, man. I, I feel bad that I didn't get a chance to work with the incredible artist. Like, I wish I would have been able to been able to work with him like, like you had the opportunity to. So you're very blessed. Yeah, <laughs> nah, John Singleton is one of one. I remember my dad was preparing for one of his shows in New Orleans. And John came to the damn rehearsal. It's a whole, we got goons over there. We got gangsters over there. <laughs> John walked in solo in there, second line and with us in there for the rehearsal. And I was like, I see why God blessed this man. Cause this man got a, a big heart, you know? Mm -hmm. And those are, those are one of ones where we got to make sure we keep that legacy going. Yes. <laughs> so I got to know Isaiah, because you're known for your epic Afro. So can you tell us about the transformation from Isaiah to Leon? Um, I, <laughs> I, <laughs> no matter what I have on, like even if I have the, the, the costume for Leon, until my hair is in the afro, I don't feel like Leon. So wow. they were like, do you want to keep the afro? Do you want to go? I'm like, I'm just trying to hold on to the afro as long as I can. Because to me, I feel like that's like 
Leon's signature hairstyle. Yeah. So it's kind of a part of it. Like, uh, I know I see you on social media for so many years, like, oh, it's a wig, it's a wig. Like, but I'm like, nah, that's all me. I, I <laughs> just cut my hair, I'm like, I can't do it no more. So, um, wow. Yeah. Man, oh. I'm about to put myself on a damn spot right here, okay? Y'all already know I'm a grandpa out of the crew. Don't let the looks mm-hmm. fool you. I'm really 87 years old. Under that is very true. But that is Snowfall true. is right up my alley when it comes to shows, but I haven't watched it fully yet. I watched the first episode, and I'm like, I got to dive in. I did this with Power. I had to wait till they mm-hmm. had like three, four seasons so I could dive in. And uh, my boy Melvin Gregg on there, I hear so many great things about this show where – I watched episode one and I'm like, with my addictive personality, I got to just wait till I could just watch them back to back to back. But mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you, you know, um, you played this character, Leon, for five years now? For one of five years. years. Wow. So how has Leon's evolution as a character changed you as an actor? Because, you know, Melvin think he a straight gangster now. I be seeing Melvin. I'm like, bro, chill out, bro. We cool. But uh, real talk, like, how did it... it uh, evolve you as a, a person as well in your real life yeah uh, Leon coming into the the game and when we first see Leon in season one he's a kid uh just you know in his in his environment and to me coming into snowfall I was just that I was a kid coming into this environment so I feel like me and Leon kind of evolved at the same pace and uh, um this season is completely different Leon than what you will see in a season one and in my personal life is it's the same thing so I was lucky to have a character that was fresh face coming into a new yeah. industry just how I was at the same time so we kind of got to grow, uh, grow at the same pace and at the same time so um like for me uh keeping my family close to me is what keeps my mind clear on not bringing the character home um keeping key people around me to you know just remind me who I am and who I am spiritually and, and what, what my goal is coming into this industry in the first place. So I'm always constantly reminded of that. And um, honestly, I love into like when I'm in LA filming snowfall, I'm always in South central, like for real, like outside of set, I'm, I'm out there because I love connecting with people. Um, I don't, I don't want to sit there and say, Oh, I'm so method, but I just love connecting with people. So I like to hear people's stories and things like that. So that helps me separate myself from Leon um, because I'm actually talking to these people in real mm-hmm. life, in their real situations. And I'm, this is not just some, you know, me putting on a costume and being Hollywood. Like I'm really interacting with these people. So- And um, you basically saying you a real actor, man. That's what he's saying. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. But you know, you can tell though by watching your performance, it's authentic. You, you know, it doesn't look like you're just putting it on or you're acting or you're saying words on the page. It seems like it's coming from a real experience. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't want, of course I can't say anything, but like we have some performances coming up. Oh my Lord. Like, put my soul into these performances. So I just can't mm-hmm. wait. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, no. well, yeah, Jasmine, yeah. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, we can't wait to see it. And like Romeo said, I'm a big binge watcher as well. So I'm definitely going to tune in to Snowfall, watch Pilot to season five, four or five, whichever one we're on now. I'm going to watch the whole thing. But we do have to take a break. But we want to thank Isaiah John for getting into the mix with us today. And you guys, be sure to check him out tomorrow night and every Wednesday at 10 p.m. only on FX. But keep it locked right here, you guys, on Fox Soul. We'll be right back. Yeah, appreciate you. (laughs) Welcome back to the show, you guys. Our next guest is now a staple on the mix. She's our favorite gossip queen who, instead of reporting on the blogs last week, she ended up on the blog herself. (laughs) Her interview (laughs) Her interview with Beyonce's father, Matthew Knowles, went viral, not only in America, but all over the world. You know, we had to bring her in to get the mix and the exclusive tea on what went down. So let's welcome back the host of Leah's Lemonade, Leah Henry. What's up, Leah? Yeah. You had quite a week. <laughs> oh, you're going to have a week, honey. I've had a week. Okay. Listen, before before we get into it, because I know it's going to be a lot of spilt lemonade and tea all over the goddamn flow. Let us show you the clip that went viral online speculate obviously chloe and holly are proteges of beyonce people constantly compare chloe 
to Beyonce, um, a younger Beyonce. Do you see the comparison, like the same thing that you saw in young Beyonce? Do you see that in Chloe Bailey? You gotta be kidding me, right? You asking me that question? <laughs> yes, I wanna know. Are you actually serious that yes. you're comparing that young lady to Beyonce? People say if there was anybody to play a biopic. Okay, you're talking about if someone was doing a movie, not well, but no, people compare wise. them. People do compare them. Talent like, wise, are you telling me talent wise, somebody is an idiot enough to compare her to Beyonce? Talent wise, people saying her talent is equal to Beyonce. They are idiot. Period. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to let the silence oh, simmer oh, because. Oh. Wow. That was, that was crazy. That that literally was like, what was going through your head when he was saying all of that? So honestly, okay, so here's now I'm glad I'm on the mix so I can I can kind of walk y'all through a play by play. Yeah. But here's my thing. You, when I first asked him, he goes, Are you kidding me? Y'all have to understand. Me and Matthew Knowles talked for a whole hour, had a great conversation. It was completely engaging. We had a rap battle. It was fun, y'all. And so when he goes, Are you kidding me? I thought he was gonna be like, yeah, I definitely see, are you kidding me? So that's why I start like laughing. That's why I'm like, yeah, like. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, are you an idiot? And I was like, like, yeah. like I dropped. And then, you know, further on, we get through the internet, like we get through that moment. And he's like, he's like, anybody saying that is an idiot. He was like, and then he was, I was like, no, well, Chloe's really talented. And he was like, no, I'm asking you a yes or no question. And I'm like, I love this girl. Like I love Chloe and Holly, like been fans for a very long time. So my back felt against the wall, but I refused to do that because I know A, Beyonce wouldn't want me to do that. And B, secondarily, <laughs> that wasn't the intent of the question. It wasn't to tear her down. So I, you know, one, I don't regret, regret asking the question first and foremost, because it, it's a, a conversation online. And I felt like, you know, did he see the same qualities? I felt like it was almost a moment to create like a prophetic system, right? Where he was going to pour into her and say those qualities that he saw in a young Beyonce, he saw in Chloe. Obviously he didn't feel that way, but I feel like what could have been said was, hey, listen, I don't compare anybody to my child. So, you know, it, it was the delivery, hence why everybody's mouth was on the floor when the clip finished rolling. I don't think anybody was prepared, including me, for him to respond that way. Oh, I agree. I have to ask, have you heard from Matthew Knowles or anyone from his team since that interview happened? Okay, yes, yes. Y'all are getting exclusive lemonade here because I have not talked about this publicly, but I have talked to his team. Uh, we're good. The thing was, it was on Instagram Live. And as y'all know, on Instagram Live, you can be having fun and then those comments start rolling and yeah. people get caught up in those because we actually did move on. We moved on. We started mm -hmm. talking about his podcast, which is what he was there to talk about. And then somebody in the comments said, well, this interview was going well and it got cringy. And he was like, well, what the hell does cringy mean? And I was like, well, man, you it means uncomfortable he was like no it wasn't uncomfortable so then it elevated like Ooh. another level like he hung up the live on oh, my ass no. like i was sitting there oh, like okay. <laughs> okay no it drops the mic yeah it was it was insane but you know what at the end of the day i do have a great amount of respect for what he's been able to do with beyonce i understand when you build your child from you know a, a star a child to a, a mega star i understand that in your mind there is nobody who is compa yeah. like comparing to beyonce i mean let's be clear there's not many but the reason that i asked that was because so beyonce yeah it, it's nobody compared to beyonce truthfully like he just had the wrong delivery. Like you said, like that's mm -hmm. his daughter. He probably have her on a pedestal like all our parents do with us. Yeah. But um, I just think this was a situation where it's just different generations. You know, if this was 30 years ago and he answered that question like that, people wouldn't even really care about it. But you can't tear another young talent down that's constantly compared and it's inspired by your daughter. Your right. daughter inspires so many people across this world. So if somebody's getting compared to her, that's a compliment. You know, you have to tear yeah. somebody down. It reminded me, Jazz, you may notice this. The old heads do this in basketball where they think that um, all the old basketball players are 10 times tougher and better than the current. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do. They yeah. do that because it's like everybody's great in their time, yeah. in their era. And it's a different game now.
But obviously I mean? his daughter had to have seen some qualities hey. in these two Girl. girls that yeah. she felt like was in her for her to sign for the biggest artists in the world to sign yeah. someone. You got to know that they are incredible. And so I'm sure she saw a little bit of her in them as well. So it really, it just, it discredits their talent, which is really sad because they are some incredibly talented girls and artists. Well, and that, that's my biggest takeaway, honestly, and that's what I do want to clear up here because, you know, I am big fans of Chloe and Holly and I would have never asked that question, A, if I would have known that it was going to get that response and B, like, again, I never want to create a moment to tear anybody down. Romeo knows this being on my platform. I refuse to bring people to the lemonade stand to make uncomfortable situations. My goal is to never go viral. It's not for a moment. I love connecting with people. So listen, Chloe, if you're watching, sis, I really do love you and and I hope that we can have a conversation because I did not mean for this to turn to a moment for you to be tore down. So. Look, I'm vouching on your behalf. You are an amazing person. Mm -hmm. Every time I've been doing your, your show for years, it's been nothing but love. And like I told you, you were born to do this and you're going to have those moments. You know, it's life where you don't know what's going to happen in our business. You didn't know how he was going to answer it. You didn't know how to ask the question was going to come off. So I just want to take my hat off to you and let you know you are amazing. Keep doing amazing things. But welcome to showbiz, baby. With that being said, we have to take a quick break. But Liz is sticking around and giving us some celebrity news when we come back. So keep it locked. This is The Miss. On Fox Viral Saturday. star Leah, okay? Welcome back to the Miss. We got our girl Leah Henry in the building, aka the first Miss Miller in the house. She just gave us the inside scoop on her viral interview with Beyonce's dad, Matthew Knows. Now, she's about to hit us with some more celebrity news. What you got for us, baby girl? Talk mm -hmm. to me. Yes, formerly Miss Miller. Anyway, y'all gather around the lemonade stand, okay? Because my interview with Matthew Knowles isn't the only international news I'm spilling on. So the highly anticipated conversation between Prince Harry, Meghan Markle, and Oprah Winfrey went down on Sunday night, and the royal couple did not hold back. Meghan and Harry dished on their marriage as a couple behind the walls of Buckingham Palace. And Meghan talked about everything from false headlines in the British media to even being suicidal due to lack of support from the monarch. Now, the revelation that even shocked Oprah Winfrey was Meghan claiming that the royal family discussed how dark her unborn baby Archie would be. Take a listen to this clip. Given security, it's not going to be given a title. And also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. What? But I need to know, because this is the mix, and y'all keep it 100 here. What were your thoughts on this sit-down interview? Social media is all over the place. What are y'all thinking about it? Listen, I had a mix of emotions when watching this. My first reaction to this was not being surprised that they had to be dealing with so much racism in Europe. I mean, you know it's bad when the racism is so bad that you move to America to get <laughs> away from racism. That's when you know that shit has hit the wall. Yeah. And, you know, I think what, what was most shocking to everybody was that someone within the royal family questioned or was concerned about the skin tone. I mean, Oprah's mouth was just like open and so was mine. It's really sad that she expressed to them her mental health and her mental instability and the fact that she wanted to kill herself. And she said that she wrote letters and in, uh, wrote emails to them and they said that there's nothing they could do about it. That was really sad, especially knowing what happened to Princess Diana and how the press was really harsh on her and the family was really harsh on her, that they weren't going to look back at history and say, okay, you know what, this happened, so now we're gonna do things differently with Megan. Um, so I was really, really hurt by that mostly more than anything, that they were willing to allow this young, beautiful princess to, to commit suicide. Mm. Mm. Black princess. My yeah. dad. You know, honestly, I can't say that I'm surprised. One of the uh, fortunes I had being able to travel at such a young age is see the reality of this world and racism is very real. Um, it's like, we deal with that now. You could go down in Louisiana, you could go down to Georgia, just right up the street. And it's like, we don't want you with our family member because of the skin of your color. It's happening right now. You don't have to be royalty, but I'm gonna tell you what I was shocked about and very impressed. 
how her man held her down through this whole process. Yep. You know, that was something I was very surprised because a lot of men not going to go to war with their family to make sure that you're yeah. good. I think that says a lot about him. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. I think Megan is such a strong woman. And I mean, just, I just, I, I was shocked. I'm going to be honest. I was really shocked, especially to hear that there was conversations about how dark the, the child was. I mean, my face was wide open when I, when I heard that, I think that's just absolutely ridiculous. And I I'm so happy that she's able to share her story because it's, that was ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, like, when they first announced, like, that Harry and Meghan were going to get married, like, the public, they were like, well, she's Black, she can't yeah. be a royal family, so I kind of hope for her sake that the family would kind of take her in with open arms and be like, listen, whatever the public says doesn't matter, your family regardless, but she's getting it from the public and in private in her home and had to deal with it for years being silenced about it before she was able to finally feel like she was free enough to say something and you know, like Romeo said, Harry's been with her through it all. And even in the interview, you could see him physically holding her hand and showing his support. And it's like, not a lot of people would do that. So honestly, I commend them both for having the strength to go through it and then speak about it. Young men, take notes from Harry. That is how you hold your woman down. That is how we become stronger. That is how we build a better world for the future. For real, yeah. we hold our queens down. Yeah. Well, I honestly, I really wasn't surprised at all. And um, like you, Romeo, said, I really wasn't surprised. I wasn't, I love Oprah's line of questioning and her poise, but I didn't understand why she was shocked that the royal family was concerned about the color of the, the baby. Because to me, it just seemed like, well, duh. But unfortunately, Obviously. that's racism nowadays. To, where for me, when I heard it, I was like, oh, well, it's wrong. But I definitely believe that this is what happened. So, I mean, it sucks. But like you guys said, Thank God that Prince Harry was holding her down the whole time. I need a man like that. Hold me down. That's on period. But that's on period. Can, we, can, we, can we for a moment just give Oprah her flowers? Come on, my oh, God. Like, can, can, I, can I just say, when I was watching this interview, you know, being a host, on a show, I was just in a master class watching yeah. how she was just, mm -hmm. she would listen and then she would ask the, the question. I would be like, I would say it in my head and then Oprah would actually say the question. Like, I felt like she was with me in the house and like, she was like a high school homie of mine. We were like going, playing double dust, like going back and forth. Like, here we go, get it, get it. And then like the compassion that she had and when she, her emotions, like, I think for all the people who were not able to be alive when Oprah was in her prime and when she had her show, they got yeah, to so see tough. why that okay. woman is where yeah. she was okay. for so many years. Like, she yeah. is a gift. She is the number one. Like, I feel like we need a goddamn 60 minute special with Oprah every Sunday. Period. Every single Sunday. Okay. okay. <laughs> every Sunday, I want to sit down and watch that. My mom showed okay. y'all that she could get back in the ring any day she feels like yeah. it and give the girls a run for their money. Come on, that mom. Part. Love you. All, Come all on. right, Leah, but what's, uh, what's, what's next on the lemonade stand? Okay, yeah, now we got to get into a little more entertainment. So we're a little less than a week away from the 63rd Grammy Awards, and the Recording Academy has announced that its performers are coming out over the weekend. So although the show will be socially distanced and safe, according to the Grammys, uh, they will not let us down with these performances. So we'll see stars like Cardi B, Bad Bunny, BTS, The Baby, Doja Cat, Billie Eilish, Lil Baby, Dua Lipa, Megan Thee Stallion, Post Malone, Rowdy Rich, Harry Styles, Taylor Swift and more hitting the stage. Now, the Grammys are going to be hosted by Trevor Noah, and they are airing on CBS at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. What do you all think about the performance hitting the stage on Sunday? And I'm not going to lie. I would love if Megan and Cardi shook the tables and performed WAP for the Grammys. I'm not going to hold it. <laughs> oh, I would love that. I would love it. And Doja Cat, let me tell you, that is my girl. I am obsessed with her. But I am going to be honest, I don't really watch award shows anymore. Like, I just don't care. Yeah. Like, I'll watch the performances on YouTube afterwards. But, like, the actual award show, like, I really couldn't care less. Gen Z talk. Okay. You know what, Romeo? <laughs> yeah. I'm not the only person. You want to know what? I'm not the only person. It, you, I know. No, right. I agree with Jamie. I, I completely agree with Jamie. Although, when it, comes, when it comes to the music awards, I do watch those. So, I'm very excited for the Grammys. I will be watching the Grammys. And I agree with Jamie. 
with the Grammys, they they bring artists together that we would never imagine. Yeah. Like and who was it a couple of years ago? They did that. It was like a rock band. Like those type of performances, we couldn't pay money literally to get. So I love the Grammys because it's always really creative. And with COVID being a thing, they're going to have to step up the production value way mm-hmm. higher way more. to entertain. So I'm excited to see this. And Trevor Noah is going to be shady, but smart shady. So I, it's going to be good, y'all. But well, wait, where's Beyonce? How, they didn't announce she's performing. She's nominated for like eight Grammys. I'm not speaking on Beyonce no more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> What's the next topic? Can you take us to the next topic? <laughs> man? Like that. For the older on us. Nah. Listen, I'm just saying, I barely got my edges from Matthew Snatch. Listen, like, Matthew knows got you shook. He got you shook, baby. <laughs> I'm sorry, Beyonce. All right, moving on, y'all. Okay. But it's up Beyonce, though, and on, a, on a serious note, let's send a prayer up to 13-year-old social media sensation Lyric Chanel and her family. The 13-year-old lost her two-year battle to brain cancer, and the tributes have poured in, including Beyonce, posting an acapella rendition of her hit songs, Brown Skin Girls, Halo, and Love on Top, paying tribute to her life. Then Trey the Truth also projected a tribute on a building in Atlanta during All-Star Weekend. Did you guys hear about this sad news? Yeah, yeah, really yeah. Sad. And she was really yeah, fighting for her life, you know what I mean? It's, it's really sad to see that she didn't make it. Um, so definitely prayers go up to her and her family and everyone that donated to their uh, GoFundMe. You know, it's, it's really it's really unfortunate that she wasn't able to make it, but her story will always live on. Her life will always live on. Yes. Absolutely. Well, on, on the flip side and kind of in that arena, uh, things got really messy for one half of the City Girls this weekend. JT once again deactivating her Twitter after backlash from the way she treated a fan who claimed that she had cancer. So Twitter user Sade Randolph tweeted the rapper saying that JT was one of her favorite stars and she was a big fan and claiming that JT never actually DMs her to get a call with her. Well, fans began to ask JT to grant Sade's request and... Um, Things didn't go too well after that. JT claims that she thought her account was spam. So the rapper took to social media to explain the misunderstanding and that the account kept commenting, which led her to block it. So she says she would have never blocked anyone with cancer and it was a mistake. Um, You know, and the fan Sade also disabled her account as well. JT is back on Twitter now, but it it wasn't a great look. What, What are your thoughts? This doesn't feel like a mistake. I don't know. I feel like, I'm sorry, but I feel like you get so many comments. You're telling me she paid attention to this one account like that often. I mean, it may be possible, but I'm just saying. Or maybe the girl really was spamming. Hey, uh, DM me, call me, FaceTime me. And JT doesn't know the girl has cancer. So she's like blocked. That's fair. No, you she know, said she had cancer. I think she yeah, said it, right? Like, would tweet her and say, like, I have cancer. cancer like, yeah. I'm really Do sick. you know how many people say things yeah. on... I even get some crazy exactly. DMs sometimes. Yeah, you I'm can't be, decipher, do you really, do you not? So yeah. JT was probably like, you annoying me, me, girl, you. block. Yeah, being in that position, unfortunately, a lot of fans, when they didn't get their way with me or my pops, they'll always um, create a sad story. So not saying yeah. that the girl maybe didn't have it, but you can't jump to the conclusion that these artists are God, that these guard, these artists know everything because we don't, we're just regular humans too. So unless it's, it's uh, done a certain way, um, go, trying to handle it through social media doesn't always work to get your favorite artist's attention. Cause it is a lot right. going on on social mm-hmm. media. Do y'all I, think she's wrong for this? Do y'all think she's in the wrong or is it on a mistake? I, I think it could have been an honest mistake, but she should have just muted the account to like go ahead and block. That's like, right. I don't it's know just, about that. I yeah, mean, she was she, she was she was obviously annoyed, but you guys, we do have to take a quick break. Leah, we want to thank you so much for spilling all of the celebrity lemonade with us tonight, and yeah. make sure you guys are following Leah on Instagram for all of the celebrity news. Now, you don't want to go anywhere because we have a final surprise guest tapping in with us after the break. We'll be right back here on Fox Soul, you guys. We love you, Leah. It could be. Welcome back to The Mix. Now, all month long, we're celebrating beautiful Black queens who are slaying the game in honor of Women's History Month. 
This week, we're celebrating Maya Shaka. She's the first Black woman ever named to the NFL's officiating staff. In 2014, Maya was selected for the NFL's officiating development program, which identifies top collegiate officiating talent to expose them to some of the same experiences as NFL officials to see if they have what it takes to be an NFL ref. Maya's years of hard work, dedication, and perseverance have earned her the position. She takes the field in the upcoming 2021 season, and I know I can't wait to see her out there representing, so I might just tap into a few games for once just to see my girl. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's <laughs> That's congratulations. Really cool. yeah, congratulations, congratulations, Maya. Congratulations, Maya. Yeah. Absolutely. Congratulations <laughs> to Maya. This is a queen. So happy and proud of you. So, you guys, before we go, we have a little surprise guest who wanted to just like pop in and say hello to everybody real quick. So, let's see who it is. I wonder who is it? <laughs> oh! Hey! Hey! Oh, hey. Oh, 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 the Guys, I have missed y'all so much. Oh. I've been watching all the shows. Y'all been doing so great. Like, I've been kind of jealous. Like, I want to talk about these topics with y'all, and I can. I'm just like, you know, a viewer. It's been fun, but I can't wait to join you guys next week. Hey, to hey. Yeah. Next week! Next week! Yes, so, so you're coming back next week? That's official? Think, it's real? I'll be back next week, baby. You know, March is my month. Period. Period. <laughs> so I cannot miss the mix this month. Period. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Dang, coming through. Birthday yeah. month. Yeah. So we're so excited to have you, Tila. Thank you so much for filling in. You're an amazing I'm person. Like, hello. Thank That's you, Jamie. I, I love you guys. Girl, we love you. <laughs> you know we All right, you guys, here. but uh Make sure you guys are following us on IG for exclusive content and behind the scenes moments. And stay tuned for the Tammy Mac Late Show right here on Fox Soul, you guys. <laughs> Say hi to the babies, though. <laughs>